Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of Adorama TV. Today, we're going to be talking about the Gigapan Epic Pro Robotic Pan Head that you see here. It retails for about $900, which is not a casual investment, but what it's great for are those of you who are serious about creating fantastic panoramic images. You see, it works really, really well to create multi-gigapixel panoramic images that you could use both for printing and interactivity. Now, you may have seen these if you saw the famous inauguration ceremony photo where you could zoom in and see everybody at the ceremony for Obama's inauguration. Very cool tech. What's happening here is you could use this on your own photos to create interactive, zoomable images. And the really cool thing here is that with Gigapan, they have an interactive player that you can embed on the web, works on social media, works on your blog, makes these huge panoramic photos that people can navigate through, look for all the objects, and really enjoy the photo. We've had Gigapans for a while. They were originally used with smaller types of cameras, but this is the Pro model. It's designed to hold a camera and a lens up to 10 pounds total. So if you want to use a longer lens like this, a Pro body, this is the right thing. Of course, this extra support actually adds a little bit of weight too. The unit itself is about seven pounds, and that includes the battery with it. When you use this, it's gonna take hundreds, if not thousands of pictures. It's all gonna depend on the type of lens you use. If I'm using a longer telephoto lens like this, I'm gonna have extreme resolution, but it's gonna be a tighter punch in on the subject. If I wanna shoot a quicker panoramic, maybe I'll use a wider lens like a 35 or a 50. So it's really up to you but all of these photos get stitched together to create a really intricate Gigapan. Now, how do they get stitched? Well, it comes with its own software, Gigapan Stitch, and this is bundled with the kit or available as a standalone purchase. And what happens here is it'll make a seamless panorama. In addition to JPEG, the Stitch software also accepts TIFF and PNG files. When it's all done, you upload the image to gigapan.com for viewing and sharing, and it lets people explore. You can also go ahead and, of course, print these images out, and they make enormous prints. All right, let's take you through how to set this whole thing up. I'm going to pop it off the tripod for a second and just talk a little bit about the unit. So what we have here is a pretty straightforward piece. This is a robot, and we've got gears here that are going to go ahead and control the movement of the camera. On the bottom, I've gone ahead and attached my mounting plate. I find it a lot easier to just hold that in place, put my plate on and tighten it down and get a nice firm fit. You want this very, very snug. For extra stability, you can also attach the unit directly to the tripod. There's a built-in level right on top so I can use that for checking if it's a flat surface. Ideally, you want to go ahead and get this to be as level as possible so you don't introduce additional distortion. Now, you can attach this directly to the tripod if you need to or it has an adaptable thread that's gonna be more common with mounting plates, and that's what I recommend. The unit itself here uses a rechargeable battery. I'll just temporarily unlock it. Pops out, and you see it there. And this is a laptop type battery. If you have a charged battery, fully charged, you can run this for quite some time. You can go ahead and charge the battery while it's inside the unit if you want, or even run off of wall power. And that's what I've done here. Now, it's up to you. Any option is fine direct wall power, charging so you can run off of battery power, or running off of a charged battery. Doesn't matter. What happens though is that this is going to allow this head to move. It can do a full 360 degree rotation on the head here, and it has the ability to tilt down 65 degrees and up 90 degrees, giving you a very extensive range of motion. Now what's happening here is we have very precise movements. It's able to do just tenths of a degree as it turns. All right, let's connect the camera body first. Now, with the camera body here, I wanna go ahead and get it onto the plate. Depending upon how you're mounting the camera with a longer lens, you're gonna to need to move this position here. This is just a standard tripod type mounting plate. If I'm using a short lens, I'll put that on the body. In this case, since I'm using a longer lens, I attach it to the shoe. Now, there are seven cables included in the kit, and these trigger cables will go ahead and remotely control the camera. You're gonna to wanna to use the one that's right for your body, but even if it doesn't work, you can actually manually program the camera itself and the head and just sync them up. With the trigger cable, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna give you the ability to actually trigger the camera and control many of the features. This is gonna allow it to go ahead and take a shot and match that shot to the movement of the head. I'll go ahead and attach the USB cable to the robotic head and then use the connection port on the camera itself. 
Now, make sure the plugs are firmly pushed in. And in that case, we've made a proper connection from the robotic head to the camera body. The next thing we need to do is balance this whole thing out. And that's gonna depend on the type of lens you're using. In this case, I'm using a long lens with a collar and a foot, so the camera's elevated a bit. Therefore, I need to drop this down. Now, this will go up and down within this frame here. And what you're trying to do is essentially center the camera body between these two points. When you have that, you can go ahead and tighten things down. There we go. Next, you can go ahead and move the camera body forward and backwards, and you're trying to find the nodal point. You see there that it does slide. What I'm looking for is to take the center here where the focus collar is and put that at about the midpoint of these two bars here. Once I've done that, I can tighten that down. Now, there are more precise ways to align that, but just using that focus ring as your guide point generally works pretty well, and you'll only need to take the extra steps described in the manual if you're doing extreme close-ups and you're not that far away from your subject. In most cases with panoramic photography, getting it reasonably close is gonna absolutely work. Now, what type of lens do you wanna use? Well, it all depends on the end resolution that you're going for. In this case, I'm using more of a telephoto lens and that's gonna work well to give me a very large image. If I wanted to shoot a scene that had quick changes in it, such as a crowd scene, then I'd go with a wider lens so it could capture the scene more quickly with more imagery in each exposure. Okay, now that everything's attached, I just need to set up the camera. I'll go ahead in the menu and go down to camera setup and click OK. And what I need to do is adjust the field of view. So I'll click OK and set my zoom, hit OK, set the horizon to the top of the camera screen. So since I'm shooting this block here, I've done that. And I'll click OK. And then it says align it with the bottom of the camera screen. Now, this could be any edge in your shot. So I've done that there, and I click OK, and it determines my field of view. Now, depending upon the lens you use, the field of view may be bigger or smaller. In this case, I'm shooting telephoto, so it's going to be smaller. If I was using a wider angle lens, I'd get more in the frame. Once the field of view is set up, I can go up to New Panorama and click OK. And what I need to do is adjust the zoom. Now, I've already done this with the previous step, so I could just reuse that. I'll click OK, and it says pan to the upper left corner of the panel. So with the D-pad, I've gone ahead and aligned that. It now prompts me to pan to the lower right corner. Now I'm gonna shoot this shelving unit here, just because it's in our studio, and it'll give you a good idea of what's happening. And you see how much we could tilt. And click OK. And it's determined that it's gonna require seven pictures across and seven pictures down to do that. Now we essentially wanna show the panorama, so I'll click OK and you see the robotic head pans, and it's just gonna show me. Here's the top, that's good. There's the right corner, that looks good, so I'll click OK. There's the lower right corner, and there's my lower left corner, so you see that the head moves. Now that looks good, so I'll go ahead and press OK, and it's gonna center up, and it's just about set. Okay, now that it's gone ahead and set itself up, I'll just check it. Ask me if I'm ready to start, I'll click OK. The camera is on. It's just gonna run you through a very simple checklist. Is it balanced? Yes. Is the exposure locked? Yes. Is the focus locked? Is the flash off? Now I've clicked OK, it's gonna start to take the panoramic photo. Now this is extremely accurate. That's because it's gonna have 0 0.04 degrees for the tilt and 0.12 degrees for the pan. Very, very small movements. Now this is just gonna keep going through and shooting the individual frames, and it goes through and builds the panorama. Now there are several advanced options here that are worth noting, and it's really cool some of the things you could do with this camera. First off, what happens is, is this thing is firmware updatable. So one of the recent additions is the ability to shoot bracketed. You can shoot up to 20 exposures for positions, and this allows you to use the camera's AEB, automatic exposure bracketing, or the bracketing controls that are built in to shoot multiple exposures for each position. Really useful if you want to do HDR and then merge those in post and bring them in, or go ahead beyond that. In fact, you can even get beyond the limitations of your camera's firmware by using your camera shooting in bulb mode and letting the control cable do its job. Now, some other things worth talking about, time display. 
one of the things that's nice is you could check how long is it going to take to build this panel. It's going to go through and actually tell you estimate it. Like for example, this one has got about two and a half minutes left. Maybe you're trying to get things like a live event or deal with the remaining daylight. It's useful to know how long it's going to take to build that panoramic shot. Another thing that's nice is the ability for time-lapse, both to do a time-lapse movie if you'd like to control the camera or to record the panoramic photo and then set it to take that same shot every hour or a four-hour delay or daily. You can actually go in. Now in that case I would recommend keeping the unit plugged into power so it's got plenty to run off of. I highly recommend you explore it if you want to do panoramic prints, interactive panos, or even robotic controlled time-lapse for time-lapse video. Now, what's also included here, let's just walk through what's in the box. You get the head, you get the Gigapan Stitch software, and that software, we're going to do a detailed review coming up on another episode where we put some of these pictures together and show you how to merge them. That's going to have tagging, social integration with things like Facebook, the ability to brand with your logos. It's pretty cool. But besides the software and the head, you get the power supply, the external battery, and seven different connection cables which work really well for most cameras. They do have a detailed chart on their website that you can look up, although I encourage you to go ahead and dig a little deeper. For example, the D600, very new camera, wasn't listed as officially supported, but I saw the D800 was, and they both use the same connection port. So I took a gamble, sure enough it worked. Now this is just one of the many new products that are actually being carried at the Adorama Forensics Department. So if you're looking for things like crime scene equipment, scopes, or sites, that's actually there. And of course, those of you looking for traditional photography, this is a great unit and lots more things on the Adorama website. All right, we'll be back in the future taking a look at how to put these photos together and using the software tools. For Adorama TV, my name's Rich Harrington. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.